AMT's van trailer kits give you a good starting point for the tail light and license plate mounting with the parts marked stop tail and turn light module and license plate bracket with locations corresponding to their real life counterparts. On some older instruction sheets, such as this original issue exterior post van, the name might be slightly different. In this case, they call them the two rear bezels, but the parts are still the same and are intended to represent these, which are sheet metal boxes that bolt onto the trailer and hold the various turn signals and marker lights. Straight out of the box, these chrome blobs aren't the most convincing, but with a little bit of work they can be turned into decent replicas of the taillight boxes. The first step is removal of chrome, which I typically do with household oven cleaner from an aerosol can, sprayed on and let the part soak for a few hours. With the chrome removed, I've highlighted raised ejector pin marks with red, and I've circled one sunken mark in the middle of the box on the left, which will need a small amount of puttying to fill. Cleaned up and sanded, the taillight box looks better already, and I've simulated the variety of holes provided from different mounting options by drilling a series of five holes, 20 thou diameter, equally spaced across the top of the box. On the back side, a 364 hole is drilled in the center, part way through, to provide an attachment point for the wires. These are added using 24 gauge electrical wire, glued in place, and left extra long for final trimming after installation. I also added a pair of bolt head castings to simulate the fasteners that would hold the tail light boxes in place on a real trailer. I used the kit license plate bracket and trimmed it down and sanded it thinner to turn it into a piece of steel plate, although in hindsight it would have been just as easy to have used a piece of styrene sheet. The license plate light is represented with a piece of 1 16th styrene rod set into a mounting plate made from 10 thou by 100 thou wide strip and secured with a pair of styrene rivet heads. A section of wire was also added, which brings up the question of where is all the wiring routed on the finished model. Many real trucks and trailers use junction boxes, similar to the surface mount model pictured here. On a trailer, the cable will run from the front of the trailer to the back come to the junction box, then all the connections are made inside the box sealed from the weather to service the different lights. Construction of a model version begins with a piece of 732 styrene tube with a series of eight holes drilled equally spaced a short distance in from the end. These eight holes represent the eight ports provided for wiring on a real junction box and just like on a real installation, some of the ports won't be used. I added bolt head castings to fill the holes for the unused ports. One hole was drilled larger to accommodate the cable coming from the front of the trailer. This work is much easier to do by leaving the junction box attached to the piece of tube until all these operations are finished. When that's done, cut the junction box off at about 200 thou long and cut a small thin ring out of a piece of 932 styrene tube which will simulate the mounting flange. Glue this flange in place at an appropriate location near the back of the trailer and add four styrene rivet heads to represent the fasteners holding it to the trailer. The junction box slips inside the ring and when the assembly is all glued together it creates the illusion of the junction box being a one-piece assembly with an attached mounting flange. Glue the tail light boxes and license plate bracket in place and let the glue set thoroughly before moving on to the next step, which is measuring and trimming the wires to length and feeding them into the junction box through the various ports. This step is actually very much like wiring a real trailer minus the need to make the actual electrical connections inside the box. When all the wires are in place, secure them with a drop of CA glue, 
and move on to the next operation, which is punching a disc from 20,000 styrene and gluing this in place to simulate the lid. And again, this operation is very much like on the real truck, since most of these junction blocks are made from plastic anyway. The lenses which AMT provides in the kit will work well, and the ones that will be used are the larger round lenses here, and two of the rectangular marker lights. A small round reflector is usually fitted between the tail light lenses, and this is punched using a piece of real reflective sheet, 3M scotch light, left over from putting reflective stripey on the horse trailer a couple of years ago. Lenses, marker light, reflector and license plate will of course be installed after painting, but are temporarily attached here with white glue to give you an idea of the finished appearance. It's another bit of detailing that's rather subtle, but it's there if you look for it. With a combination of the kit parts, and some basic scratch building supplies, you can add some extra detailing to the back of your next trailer project. Thanks for watching this little detailing essay. With the exception of some door lock hardware, this trailer is just about complete, and it'll be making its way to the paint shop in the fairly near future, so the next time you see it, it should be a completed model.